Okay, on this Jeep Liberty, let's go ahead and do a wide open throttle crank and compression test with the Snap-on Varish unit with their electronic pressure transducer. So if you look at my screen right now, we did a snapshot capture here. Now the electronic essential compression, wide open throttle cranking. Now, as you guys well know, some vehicles have clear flood mode where you just go to wide open throttle and crank it over. But on this particular Jeep Liberty, it does not have a clear flood mode, so we simply had to remove the fuel pump relay. But wide open throttle cranking, and if you look at my yellow trace here, you can see 125 PSI during cranking. The green trace is number one trigger. Now, if you want to look at spark timing, you'll notice that the firing event occurs slightly a few degrees before top dead center. So right now, we know cranking compressionless vehicle, even though it's a high mileage vehicle, is good. Okay, what we've done, we have conducted an idle compression test. So if you look at my snap on unit right now, the Alitrace is your compression waveform. Now remember, we talked about this earlier. Your idle compression is going to be significantly lower than what you had during cranking. If you take a look at my yellow trace here, you can see it's roughly about 50 PSI, simply because the engine is not breathing a whole lot of air. Continuing on looking at the lab scope waveform, our green trace is the number one trigger here. Again, you can see the firing event actually occurred a few degrees before top dead center. So that's our idle compression. Now, what we're going to do is going to move on to the cruise compression. Now, what you'll see on a cruise compression is that barely off idle, let's say at about 1200 RPM, you actually see the cruise compression be slightly lower than what you are looking at now captured during idle. So let's go ahead and do the cruise compression test. Okay, if you look at my snapshot capture here during a cruise compression test, you'll notice here again on the yellow trace the cruise compression is slightly lower than what you looked at earlier on your idle compression. Now, again, the green trace is your number one trigger. Now, the point I want to make here that this might be a good test for you is the fact that if you have a, a V6 or V8 motor, double overhead cam motor, and you have retarded valve timing just in one bank, what you would see is significantly lower idle and cruise compression on the bank with the retarded valve timing, but on this case here you can see on the bank we're on right now our cruise compression again slightly lower than what you looked at earlier.